I was about to say, I was Tone. Like waiting like, for it. I was about to say, where the music at, man? What's going on? But, yeah, we don't have no music today. The one so thing I haven't brought outside. Location. The one thing I haven't brought outside is the mic and the soundboard. Right. But you know what? Maybe we'll do that. My man Tony Tone, he on location today, guys. So yeah. just, 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 the birds just start so chirping too loud. Mm-hmm. My man right, Tony Tone is on location. So all yeah. right. Well, thank you guys for joining us this morning. It's it's fun doing a morning show. I always love our little morning pop-up shows. And we have some uh, some special guests coming today. We're going to kind of do a little bit of our own mock draft, which will be fun. Uh, go through all the, the top 10 prospects. Maybe we'll go a little bit further depending on the time. Uh, but we have some guests. We have uh, uh, Chima. He was a, a player for the Sacramento Kings, um, but he's also... Mon- uh, Monaki. Right, you know I can't even pronounce my own last name. (laughs) Yeah, so he's gonna join us today um, from Australia. He played all around the world, which is fantastic. So he can give us kind of insights into that. He's also played in France, so hopefully we can get some insight about his connection with Victor Bailal. Um, And then we have Fred, who let's see if I can pronounce his last name too. I don't want to butcher it too bad, but. Uh, this will be our challenge. This will be our challenge before they come on. Yeah, I think it's I bet, Fred I I say it Wano. Wano? Uh, Adjiwano. Mm, Fred Adjiwano. <laughs> Adjiwano, come on. Adjiwano. That's good. That's good. Yeah, well, he'll, pretty- he'll give us the correct pronunciation when, when he gets on. But um, yeah, so he's also been very heavily involved with the French national team. Um played there for several years and then he's kind of gone into the business side of things where uh he he has a passion for kind of molding and working with these young athletes and he all he also obviously has a a familiarity ties, with, with that ties to those team. guys to those yeah. guys from france I, there's a couple of good players yeah. coming out of france this year right yeah absolutely High draft picks no yeah maybe one maybe one they got really they, they got one dude that's coming out of france that's really good really mm-hmm. oh Belisle. Another yeah, dude. So it's two. I'm sorry. So it's two dudes because okay. they got another dude that's coming out of France. He's really good. Is there, so. There's another wow. dude. Oh. dude yeah, I haven't, really I haven't heard much of him, but uh, we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll get the deets. So anyways, we're going to wait for them to jump on. Um, before we get into the draft, do you guys want to cover any of the last minute trades that we, we've kind of or should we save that till the end? You know what? Let's 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 start since we have Fred here. Maybe we oh, bring absolutely. him on and mm-hmm. he can tell you how bad you butchered his last name. Yeah. <laughs> How about we let's get to the bottom of that right now? So let's get the correct <laughs> It's not my Hi, fault. Fred. It's her fault. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hello, guys. What's up? Hi. So, now are you are, are you French? So I'm actually from West Africa. I'm from uh-huh. Togo. Okay. Yeah. So, so my so my parents they are actually from Togo, Ghana, and Benin, West Africa. Nice. Nice. And they moved to France uh, in the late seventies. Mm-hmm. I was born and raised in France, uh, okay. close to the Swiss borders. And uh, so this is why my last name is Ajiwanu. But you guys mm-hmm. should know. Ajiwanu, I said it right. That was like, yeah, we were too <laughs> far off. <laughs> so, so you know, Fred. So you know, Fred. I can't say my own last name right. So that's a big win for me. And he's Greek, <laughs> by the way. And he's Greek. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So so I'm pretty sure it's more harder for you to say your last name than mine. Mm. Yes. Yeah. That's what I think. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, Fred, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Um, yeah. So we. I mean. We, we want to get into kind of the draft since it is draft night tonight, which is so exciting. Obviously, we were talking about there there is a French player that's pretty high on that list that's supposed to be getting drafted tonight. So, yeah. um, we, we Hey, definitely... you know what? I don't know if you heard the doorbell. There's actually someone who I believe beat that person uh, who played in France uh, wanted to come in too. So let's uh, give him a warm welcome. Kima, hello. Ah, what's, ah, going what's going on? What's going on, guys? Awesome. Thank yes, you. Sir. So we, we don't want to we we butchered Fred's last name, so we're we're gonna do our best here. What is it? Chima Moneke? Is Moneke. That... Moneke is perfect. Moneke. Hey. Awesome. It is. All right, we got it. So awesome. Yeah, so we, we definitely want to dive into the draft tonight. Some of the prospects we were talking with Fred about how obviously Victor and then Bailao also is is from the French team. So we want to dive into that, but first we want to get some introductions from you guys about kind of your personal journeys uh, playing basketball. I know they're very different, but yet you both played overseas, which is kind of a cool experience coming to the league. So, um, 
yeah, so Fred, why don't you you give us your intro, kind of how you got started playing basketball and, and where you are now? Okay, all right. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Frederick Ajuanu, born and raised in France. Uh, I'm 6'8". Uh, I'm going to be 43 years old next month. So I'm younger than some of the guys here, you know, around the table, but... You know, uh, I, I still a baller, by about, the way. He, he can still play. Just so you know, don't let the forty three fool you. He can still play. <laughs> just so you I know, wish. I wish, I wish, I wish. But I'm sure that I'm sure that we can throw a little game of one on one. You know, like one of these days, guys. With pleasure. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I started playing basketball when I was twelve. You know, did, didn't know anything about basketball mm -hmm. at all. I used to run track, and back in the days, you know, back in the in the nineties, basketball wasn't really big in France. But in 1992. We all witness, you know, one of the best team, you know, in the world, like the sure. green team. So that kind of launched a little bit, like, you know, my my journey with basketball. So in 1998, when I turned 18, I actually um, started playing for Limoges CSP. You know, for mm -hmm. the one who knows, it's one of the best team in France. You know, they're the only team who actually won, you know, like the the Euro the Euro League back in the days. It wasn't the same name. Yeah. So, <laughs> You know, at the time, so 1998 and 2000, uh, I was playing with that team with Fred Weiss, Jan Bonato, a few names that you, uh, right. that you guys yeah. might know. Mm -hmm. And I uh, went to the States, you know, from 2000 to 2005. So I played two years in junior college in Los Altos, uh, Los Altos Hills, California, mm -hmm. and for St. Mary's College, you know, uh, under Randy Bennett. Mm -hmm. So 2005, we went to the tournament. Didn't pass the first round, but it was a great experience, and I decided to uh, to actually uh, put my name you know, in the draft. Mm -hmm. But my agent that you actually know, his name is Buna Inja, he's Victor Wembayama's agent, but also Chia, yeah, <laughs> yeah, brother. <laughs> we know the same people, so he's the one who pretty much uh, told me not to give up on basketball because I was kind of disappointed after you know I couldn't play with the Mavericks during the summer league. Mm -hmm. So the good thing about basketball, there's like other leagues in the world and all that. So I decided to come back and play, you know, back in Pro here in France. And I pretty much play first division, second division. I also play in Orléans, Chimé, mm -hmm. just like you. And, um, you know, that's it. That's pretty much like, you know, yeah. my career. I had the opportunity, like though, it. to play with the Spurs mm -hmm. in uh, 2007 during the summer league. Mm -hmm. It was a great experience. Didn't get a contract, but full experience to be able to yeah. be around a great organization, you know, actually show me what it takes to make it. And I can honestly say that at the time I wasn't ready for the NBA, you know, there's no shame to this, but I learned so much, you know, about the game, what it takes, mm -hmm. the mentality, you know, the business as well. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was, it was just a great lesson, you know, to me, sure. because, you know, when you're young, you're like, oh, damn, you know, why? You know, I could have made it if they would have gave me more PT or blah, 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 blah. But as, right. at some point, you have to be able to be honest with yourself and be like, yo, mm -hmm. okay, the game, I had it. But the mental right. aspect of it, I didn't have it at the time. So, right. yeah, so that's pretty much, you know, uh, me as a basketball player. And then after that, you know, when I started playing uh, about six years ago, I was starting like pretty much like consulting in sports to mm -hmm. pretty much like be by those young kids, you know, who actually wants to be, to become like professional athletes, be professional mm -hmm. basketball players, but to give them the advice and to get ready, you know, for what it takes to make it, right. but also if you don't make it, the journey is so, is so positive and powerful that you mm -hmm. can actually accomplish and copy and past the entire process mm -hmm. to any type of uh, goals, objectives that you have in life. Fred, a lot of people, they think that the game at the professional level, it's at the college level, it's at the high school level, where it's just basketball. They don't realize that there's so many other things that go into it, right? Like you just yeah. mentioned, the, the, the mental aspect of it, of yeah. how to be a professional. They think that, yo, I got a super nice handle or I can shoot the three, so I'm going to be able to play at that level. And they don't realize that there's so many things that, that yeah. go into it. Exactly, exactly. There's so much. And, you know... We, us guys, I mean, we uh, we went through it. You know, Chime is going through it right now. And uh, I know that Chime and I, we have a lot in common because mm -hmm. his, his agent was my agent. And I was one of uh, my agent first players. So I pretty much, you know, witnessed, you know, his, uh, his, his journey, you know, throughout like 
one side of the of the business and the other side. You know what I mean? So right. people don't realize how hard it is you know, to become a professional athlete, but they don't understand how hard it is to stay you know, right. at that level. Mm. So it's really easy to sit down here and say, oh, oh, if I was him, or oh, if you give me this, I would, I would, I would. But no, it's not the case. It's not the case. And just the fact that you are actually able to play professional sport, it's mm -hmm. a blessing. You know, you got to be, you got to be able to look at it as, yo, I made it, but now I have to stay in it. I have to stay in it. So uh, it's a daily, it's a daily fight. You know, yep. because people don't realize with basketball, it's a sports game. But at the same time, it's really like a individual game. And you have to be selfish. You know what yeah. I mean? Like to, you have to be selfish. That's what people don't realize. It's like your teammate is your friend, you know, off the court. But when it's training time or practice time, right. your teammates become your enemy, your friendly enemy, because you have to compete against him every day to right. get some PT just to be able to be in a game. And at the end of the day, you have your teammates behind you. Then you got the new generation coming up. Then at the same time, you have like overpays in the league because coaches, you know, institutions are looking at like right. players to get better, you know, season mm -hmm. after season. So even though, you know, it's um, it's a big world, people might think it's a big world, it's a small right. world. Because at the end of the day, uh, even if you like a small family, yeah, we go to war every day, you know, mm -hmm. during practice and every weekend during game time. So you, you have to be... You have to be tough mentally. That's really like the way I see it. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a good point. And you know what? You brought up a lot of stuff. And we're going to ask you about that and more. Uh, but yeah. let's get Jermaine and maybe tell us a little bit about your journey. And it sounds like it's a similar journey, just maybe a couple of years after, after Fred's. <laughs> yeah. uh, but tell, and then and then we kind of get in because we want to obviously get into the draft. We want to get into kind of some of your playing yeah. days, some of, your, some of those things. How hard mm -hmm. it is. Because like you said, to get to the top of the mountain is one thing. But it's hard to stay on top when everybody else is trying to push you down. So I, I want to get to all of that. But tell us about your journey. Is it is it very different? Uh, so we we have a lot of things in common, just from what I'm hearing from his story. Um, I didn't start playing basketball until I was 13. I wanted to be a, a soccer player. Um, and then I went to junior college as well. I was, like, doubted as a kid in Canberra because I grew up in Australia. Hold, 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 hold on. Tone, shout out to junior college players, okay? Yes. Juco yes. right here. Yes. Juco yes. right here. Yes. Juco yes. right. Shout out to yes. the junior yes. college Juco, players. Juco, shout listen, out. Juco. I want you Champlain College. Gotta work, so. You got to. You guys got to work harder. You don't. Yes, you don't get. Sir. You don't get. You don't get the nice little. You know, like I had the food Absolutely. card where I just got to swipe it and nah. I eat. You got to no. work for your you food. Get, I know. Yeah. Continue, yeah. my good man. I just want to yeah. shout out to Juco players because I know what it's like. For sure, for sure. I mean, so I'm, I'm glad that I had that experience because that was mm -hmm. my first experience in America. And the level I was playing at in Australia, it was nowhere near to what the junior college level was. Right. And I needed that. You know, if I went straight to Division One, like I would have, you know, redshirted or I would have taken even more time or I wouldn't have played or I would have transferred mm -hmm. out. Who knows? But I went to junior college and I was like, this isn't my dream to be in junior college, but I see that I'm not even ready for this. Because it's, it's taking some time to get to put up the numbers that I thought I would put up and have the success. That came in my second year in junior college. And then I, you know, I committed to UC Davis and mm -hmm. red redshirted there. And then I became, you know, I had a monster two years there and, you know, came overseas, mm -hmm. went, for, went second division my first two years. I'm... I'm looking at my friends in the NBA making millions and my first contract is, you know, 2,200 euros. And, and I'm, I'm thinking like, yo, I feel like I, I should be in the NBA, but I'm getting this, I'm only getting this. And, you know, I start doing the comparison and I'm starting to be like, damn. And then to make it worse, I get cut three games into my rookie year. Mm -hmm. And that obviously derailed me, sent me a few steps back, mm -hmm. found myself again. And then I had to, you know, come back to the second division, a different team in France. And then from there, we got the journey rolling, went to first division France, went to Spain. Last year, we went to the finals of the Champions League. I was the MVP of Champions League. Dope. I was first team all ACB. And if you know, you know, Spain's the, the best league to play in in Europe. And then after that was my fourth year. And then I signed a contract with the Sacramento Kings. Mm -hmm. And like Fred was saying, you know, it's hard to stay and you know, you learn about the politics behind the game and, you know, people doing other people favors. And, you know, you know, it was 
it was a great experience. I'm not a victim in any way, you know, I'm, I'm grateful, but um, I just could feel that I wouldn't really get the same opportunity as other people. And that's just, that's life. You know, right. I'm so grateful to be able to play at a high level. And now I'm in a beautiful place like Monaco and, you know, we just finished third in Euro league. We yeah. won the French league, we won the French cup and, um, there's no taxes in Monaco too, so life is good. <laughs> make sure we make sure we mention that part. I get to keep the majority of my bread. I, 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 like, I like that part. I like that part. I, I, I definitely dig that part. For yeah. me, I keep I keep all of it because I'm not an American citizen, so I don't right. have to pay taxes. Anyway, I only pay taxes where I live, and I live in Monaco now, so that's awesome. It's it, it, it's it's and really quickly, Tone. It's awesome to hear about you guys' journey because I played in junior college. Not only did I play in junior college, I played Division One basketball after junior college. And then I went to play in Ireland, right? I went to play in uh, Belgium. So the journey is, is, is very similar. And to hear about guys playing in junior college, did you guys end up going to the national tournament, like in Kansas? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah, because because we and we yes, we ended up doing that my freshman year. We ended up we 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 were one game away from the final four. So I'm from the, like this is bringing me back to when I played. Listening to you guys talk yeah. about this, this is this is really good stuff, man. I I remember all of that and how tough the competition was in junior college. So this this is great. This is really good information. But, but can I also say I think it for anybody who's watching or is gonna watch this later, it also tells you there's more than one path, right? Everyone yes, just is. thinks you go like high school. D1 NBA. No. 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 Sometimes it's not going to work out that way and you got to take, you know, you got to go over here mm -hmm. and over there and and you and and your your end goal might actually end up being different. Like you mm -hmm. look like you're really happy in Monaco. Oh, right? I'm... So even though the dream yeah. might have been the NBA, uh, you don't look like you're upset. No, no, no. And like <laughs> and and like you said, everyone's journey is different. I'm glad that my journey wasn't NBA and then EuroLeague and then first division somewhere else right. and then second division. There's a lot of guys that, you know, when I was playing in Australia, I was looking up to because they were playing Division One, and they were drafted in the first round. And, you know, a few years later, you know, you don't know where they're playing. And I'm glad that I wasn't gifted anything. I had to I had to get everything I got from the mud. And that's why I'm, you know, playing at the highest level outside of the NBA right now. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm happy with it. And let's be very so we got clear. A guy. Let's be very clear. Let's be very just a quickly, quickly, because he'll 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 back me up on this. I've been to Monaco two times for the F one. Monaco is beautiful. It mm -hmm. is beautiful. Like that. that so we got. So we got a guy. You're very lucky. You're very lucky. That's beautiful. Appreciate that. So we got a. So we got a guy in the draft tonight in Wimby, and you're familiar with Wimby. What yeah. What can we expect out of this guy moving forward? Is that for me? Or is that for Fred? Yes. Okay, uh, both, no, both, both. I'll start with I'll start with Fred. Fred, I, when I see when I first saw Wimby, the first thing yeah. and Tony and I had this conversation. When I first saw him, he reminded me of he, he looked like Ralph Sampson with a handle and a jump shot. That's who yeah. I thought he was. And I'm thinking to myself, this is the this this could look like this is what the future of basketball looks like over the next 10 to 15 years. What we're gonna have is we're gonna have a bunch of six ten to seven foot four, super nice basketball handle, shooting a jump shot. Like what can I expect from Wendy moving forward? Well, uh, well, first of all, I really I wanna emphasize one point which is really important. People see sees Wemby as this young, you know, seven two, you know, young kid skinny, you know, who's not going to be able to make it, you know, in the NBA. Right. But when you look at it, uh, we talk about mindset. We did mm -hmm. talk about, like, mental toughness and everything. And I really think that, you know, he has it. He already, he already knows, you know, what it's about. And there's a difference between being, like, big-headed mm -hmm. and being confident. You know, when you're big-headed is when you start spreading words and say, yeah, blah, 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 I can do this, I will do this, I will do that. But you're just talking, you know. Wemby is a uh, is special because he talks about it, but he will do as mm -hmm. well. You know what I mean? Action speaks better than words. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a lot of things that when you have like so much pr pressure, meaning that the entire world is looking after you, mm -hmm. looking to you. Everybody's waiting for him to slip up, you know. But mm -hmm. for this this player to go to the states, you know, to play against Anderson, you know, live TV Vegas. People thinking that he's not going to make it because that was his first time in the States, you know, really playing against, like, good competition. Not right. professional competition, but I'm talking in the eyes of America. You know what I mean? Right. Like, against American players. Right. 
after what he did in the season that they had, you know, and they failed against Monaco and, you know, Monaco had the squad. I mean, they load up, you know what I mean? Like they're supposed to, they, they were supposed to win it all anyway. But when you look at what he did, he actually did stay healthy. He didn't get hurt. You know, he right. put his team, he put his, his team all the way up to the championship game against the third best team in Europe, you know, Monaco. And with, with all this, what we can expect, first of all, is just his mindset. Right. You know what I mean? He's ready. My, like, his mind is ready, you know, for, for the NBA. Now, physically, I don't think it's going to be an issue. When KD, make, when, when KD made it to the league, all oh, back in the day, Station Prince, everybody was making fun of those skinny guys. Ah, oh, they ain't going to be able to play. They're going to last like only two to three years. Look at KD today. Look at Janice. When Janice came to the league, it was skinny bone. He was 199 pounds when Giannis exactly. showed up. He was barely and 200 pounds. Think, and I don't think his mindset was as ready as Wemby. Wemby right. been carrying his pressure just like Bronny James for right. years now, you know, because there's so much expectation, you know. So at the point of view, for me, he's ready. Now, only time will tell. Let let the kid be on the court. Let the mm -hmm. kid, you know, like face up, you know, one of the best athletes and best baller in the world. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we, we're going to be able to talk crap about him. The same right. thing happened with Luka Doncic. You know, people were saying like, ah, they did play for Real Madrid, Euro League and everything. Yo, the kid, the kid was 18. He was already balling against like grown men. He came to the league and now look, four years afterwards, everybody's behind Doncic. Like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. So, like, like we said in English, don't judge a book by its cover. You know, nice. let us open, let us let, let us turn the first page, you know, read it and see what's coming next. But I think yeah. he's ready. I think that his um, his shoulders, you know, are ready for the challenge, and that's what he wants. And when you know what you want and you're confident about it, only work will tell. And that's, yeah. you know, All right. You know, so let's let's go do. let's go to a guy who played on that Monaco team who beat uh, who beat them and who also. Went up against NBA talent. So right. when you, when you played against them, what were the things that you saw, mm -hmm. and and compare that to kind of the guys you played up against in the NBA? Is this a guy that can come in to the NBA like day one and be ready? In your opinion? Yeah. So um, I played against him two years ago when he was in Nanterre, when he just turned seventeen, mm -hmm. and you know he was listed at seven two at the time. And I swear to God, I was telling everyone, "Yo, this kid is seven four. I guess it's not, it's he's not smart. Like, he's bigger than that. He's bigger than that. And like we have the same agent, Buna. And uh yeah. Buna said it was a thing where they were just, you know, like kind of like the Katie thing. He didn't want to be listed at seven foot. Right. But I could just tell this guy was I'd never seen anyone that tall in my life, right? But basketball wise, he was just That's crazy. That 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 alone is crazy. Like yeah. for the levels you played, you've never seen yeah. a guy that tall, no, right? Think about that. No. Nobody. And it's funny because the next year I saw Yao Ming and I'm like, I saw Yao Ming in person. I'm like, they're probably right there. Oh, and Yao, wow. Ming is, <laughs> Yao Ming is taller than a lot of people think. Like they listen to seven six. Anyway, back to Wemby. Wemby is, he's special because his mindset is different. He's a normal, weird kid. Like he, right. he loves to read. He loves to draw. He mm -hmm. loves to juggle. Like he's, he believes Did you in say juggle? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, no, for real. Like he's, 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 he's special in terms of he knows who he is, and none of this fame is gonna change him. Like he's gonna go to the NBA, and he's gonna be the same. He's gonna make corny jokes. He's gonna, he's gonna I have like that. He's gonna be. That's himself. my thing. That's my thing. Yeah, I that's, love corny jokes. Too, so <laughs> I, I, I rock yeah. with him for that. Um, and that's a big thing because a lot of people get to the NBA, they see the bright lights and they, they want to change and become a different right. person. But he has a great family, great group of people around him that, you know, that are confident in him and won't let him change. Mm -hmm. That's that's number one. Basketball wise. Um, so I played against him two years ago and I was telling all my teammates in early on, I don't think you guys know what you're seeing. This guy would be the number one pick if he was draft eligible right now. And that was that was two years ago. Um, you know, he's he has all of the tween tween, the pull ups and it's incredible. But now at the highest level, fast forward two years later, playing against us, we have eight people on our in our roster that have played in the NBA. So, like, we got guys that are dogs and right. 
we had a lot of success against him in the in the French Cup game. We we played against him in the regular season and the first two games of the series. Mm-hmm. And then he made the adjustment of understanding that we had guys that are six six, six seven, six eight, and we're physical and we're low to the ground. And when he wants when he wants to put the ball on the floor, we're there. Mm-hmm. He likes to cross, and it's a wide cross. And you know how low to the ground are you going to get when you're seven five, seven six? Right. We we he had eight points in the first two games against us, and like he was struggling. And then in game three, he realized I need to get off the ball. This right. guy cannot. He gets off the ball, and like your human instinct is to stand up and relax. And he no, cuts, no. and then he catches a a lob backwards and slams it home for the first point of the game, or he gets an offensive rebound, or mm-hmm. like he he will have success when he realizes that. Yes, he can do the dribbling and the pull ups, but like the PJ Tuckers and the Draymonds, they're gonna be they're gonna be physical with him and get into his body so that they force him one way and they can contest the shot, and that's when you have success. Right. But like the the long centers that'll let him play and just put a hand up, no chance of guarding him because he's just right. too, he's too tall and the shot is too good for for you to play that way. Right. So I'm proud of the the you know progression he made. The changes that he made from game one, game two into game three, right. you know, right. I I, I, pred- I predict him to win rookie of the year by a landslide. The only thing that's going to stop him is is injury. You know, that's. So that's you it. clearly think he's the best player in the draft. Like it's not a question. You know, the the top three, top four guys, because even Amon is is incredible. Yeah. Those guys yeah. have the chance to be like superstars, game changers. But Wemby is just, if he doesn't get hurt. There's just you know, sure, in, yeah. by, by year the, two, the skill and size, right? It's you the can't, and size you can't just, teach seven four or five. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think I think he can like you can expect like a fifteen and ten and three blocks in his in his first regular season. That's good enough wow. for rookie. Yeah. You know yeah. that's, oh. and then by year two he will put it together and his shooting percentages will go up and I think mm-hmm. he'll be an all star in his second year, and he will learn very fast. Like he. First 20 games, he may struggle, but then he'll see and he'll make adjustments and he'll be so special. Things will start to click. Um, Go ahead. I'll, I'll interject fluent. So, uh, Fred, I wanted to ask you, I don't know when the first time you got to meet Wemby was, um, if, if he was younger, but I was going to ask, you know, what are some of the transitions in his game that you've noticed, depending on how long you've known him? Have you seen certain things that maybe at first were questionable, whether, you know, it was that defense. I know defense he's really tightened up on over the years, but are there certain things that have grown and matured throughout this time uh, yes. in France? Yeah. Yes. One, I think the number one thing is really his capacity to actually make the right decision, the right play right away. You know, mm-hmm. you, uh, what I've noticed is that the way he's going to look and catch the ball now is 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 way faster than what he used to. Back in, mm-hmm. Like a few years ago, I would say last year, he used to catch the ball and kind of look directly into his defender. Now, he doesn't even look at his defender. He catches it and look at the rim right away. So mm-hmm. when you're that tall, you know, and, and you actually got this capacity to, to see what's going on before overs, he has that point guard type of skill, like that Jay Key, that Steve Nash. You know, you know mm-hmm. when people say that, yo, those point guards were great, or even uh, Chris Paul, they're great. They're so fast. No, they see things before you actually you see it yourself. But that's one thing. Sick, and I think that now that he understands that a lot of people are going to try to go to him, try to be physical with him. Mm-hmm. He takes his, he takes his time. You know before he's going to play the game, you know, mm. you look, if he can pass the ball, even his positioning on the court now, you know, is really specific. It's even like outside the three-point line and he goes, and he goes down low. That's the thing. He goes down low. Even if he knows mm. he can, he might not be able to post up like some of the bigs, you know, in the French leagues. He's smart enough, you know, to really see what's going on. And when the double, triple team are coming, kick it out. So mm-hmm. it's IQ, you know, I really – Thing. I, I do think that his IQ, playing IQ, as mm-hmm. far as like his guard skills are like above average. People don't really realize, just like Shimmy said, when do you see a 7 2 guy dribbling the ball, you know, that low, doesn't get like picked, doesn't lose the ball? And that's also something that people got to see is that's his, re- that's his turnover ratio. Right. You know, when you look at that, that should tell you that, hmm. When he's gonna get more, 
more maturity, you know, mm-hmm. a, a bit like what what happened with Janice. You know, Janice, he, he starts learning that, you know, like right. how to penetrate and kick the ball out and everything. Victor Wemby, he already has that. Right. He has that, you know what I mean? So that's what, that's the main difference that I see is actually his guard skills because everybody's like, oh, he told, he told he's a big man, he's a big man, but he's not. He's not. When you can right. actually, you know, make your teammates better, and when you look at the Paris team, you know, like the Metropolitans, I've I've known a lot of those players, you know, right. like uh, Steve Oyufat. I know you guys like start cracking jokes about his last name and everything, you know, mm-hmm. when he came to the States. But, you know, shout out to my man, Steve. But all Lau, uh, Lau and the rest of the guys, they're, they're good players. But he right. actually made them better, you know, playing their, like, their, their role of players uh, type of game. Because right. when we... Wemby is like is the point of interest. Everybody thinks that the ball's gonna go through Wemby and the team's gonna win, but no, mm-hmm. he made all of all of his teammates actually better. And when you get a kid like that, who understand that at that level, we like she may say in two to three years, people's gonna be really surprised. You know, there, people are gonna be really surprised. Two things that you just brought up, which I, I think are really interesting, when you talked about like PJ Tucker's and guys and Draymond Green, guys getting into mm-hmm. him and his, his ability to adjust where he'll just get off the basketball and make other plays. I think that goes also into the logic of how people think that Euros, people think that Euros are soft. Like Tony Parker was not soft. I want to make no. sure that we clear on that. A lot of people think that a lot of Euros are soft. Tony Parker was not soft. So when I think about guys like Wimby, there's another guy that I also think about, and he's in. He was in the Spanish league. Uh, James Naji. Tone knows how I feel about big guys. Tone knows that I am a big guy merchant. I love big guys. I think this kid is a steal. I think whoever gets him, I think that whoever passes on him, they're gonna make a mistake. Am I crazy? Uh, I, lo- I I love James. Um, James is my Nigerian brother. I played against him last year mm-hmm. in in Spain. So like. You know, we're we're friends and we communicate. Just talked to him yesterday, actually. And yeah. I, I, I'm on your side. I really feel like he can go in and he can kind of what like, like Jalen Duran did in his rookie year. I don't know. Yes. If, I don't know if James will get that same opportunity or if he'll have to go to the G League. But when you see this kid in person, you'll be like, how old are you? Because he, <laughs> he's, he's legit 6'10", 6'11", and he's 250, mm-hmm. probably 5% body fat. He... Wow. He he he's a little block happy right now. He jumps at everything, but like physically, he's there. He's smarter than he looks, and I he's gonna be a he has a chance to play in the NBA for a very long time. And yeah, Europeans are not soft. You come to Europe and play, yeah. and you know that it's way more physical than the NBA. And that that doesn't mean that NBA players are soft. It's just the way the game is called. Right. It's just a it's a different game. And, you know, yeah. They still they still allow like some of the hand checking and, and they allow more physical plays, so which is why it's more physical. And exactly. I think I, and some of that still comes from like we're talking 30, 40 years ago, right? That right. soft label and, and and that has to do with you know some of the things that <laughs> NBA players were getting away with that they, they don't allow to happen anymore. But those things I don't think have changed. Some people still have that old mindset that it's it's not a tough game, but it is, and you guys can attest to that. Yeah, it's it's that's ignorance. That's ignorance. I mean, you you see European teams are catching up with the U.S. in the World Cup and the Olympics. It's not easy anymore. Right. You right. saw it two years ago. I was on that team with Nigeria when we beat the USA, and a lot of those guys on that that team Nigeria play in Europe, and it's 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 just different. It's different. And Wemby, he looks skinny. He's not backing down from nobody. He's gonna get beat up. He's gonna take his licks, but. You know he's gonna that's be part of it. That's part gonna, of it. He, he and he that's embraces that's part of it. Yeah, yeah, that's that. part of it. Cry about nothing. The, the mm-hmm. first, the, that's the first step, right? Is embracing it and not shying away from it. So if that's mm-hmm. what he does, then that's a good thing. And I want to get back to the draft in a second, but I, I want to go back a second, or maybe like five minutes, because Freddie had brought up the '92 Olympics and yeah. kind of what that meant to people, like paying attention to basketball and starting to say, "Hey, I want to play basketball." And I could yeah. tell you from someone who was in Toronto. When Vince Carter came to the Raptors, like after those first couple of years, you saw basketball courts being put up everywhere. Did yeah. that 92 Dream Team kind of have the same effect where you started seeing courts and rims being put up kind of just where they hadn't been before? And obviously a bunch of kids, more kids playing and thinking this is something that I should or want to do. Yes, actually, you know, um, you know, when I started playing, 
uh, since I was between two countries, you know, I was between France and Switzerland. Switzerland, mm-hmm. you know, I was close to Geneva. So Geneva was a, is still like an international city. So it was a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of American expat, you know, on site. So um, the way the Dream Team affected and actually blessed, if I may say that, blessed actually Europe with basketball, mm-hmm. uh, is like... Like Drake will say, it's like going from zero to 100 real quick. You know, really, wow. like after 1992, uh, everybody, even myself, we're just like all about the NBA, Jordan, Chicago Bulls, Chicago, Chicago, everybody. I mean, it was ridiculous. And we all like, we we're all rocking our like Air Jordan 6, you know, the sixes, the bread back in the days because it was the first edition mm-hmm. and everything. And I really think that the wave that, the dream team generated, you know, for basketball is something that people don't really understand. I don't even think that when France won the World Cup in 1998, you know, the 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 the, the push that you know, like the people in France and Europe, you know, really followed that movement. I don't think mm-hmm. it was as big as the dream team. The dream team is everything, you know. When you had like Scotty Pippen. David Robinson, Mike, you had like, it was an all-star team. Yes. I mean, we, we didn't have anybody in Europe except uh, uh, Dresden Petrovic, Detlef Schramm, but they were not like big time. They were not big name, you know, in right. basketball, you know, especially in Europe. So uh, what uh, David Stern did with uh, with the NBA at the time was, was, was humongous yeah. because we were able at the time then to actually watch NBA games more than once every two weeks. Because back in the days, for the ones who follow us, internet wasn't didn't exist. So you had to go right. grab like a VHS if someone had, you know, the box so you could actually get the tape. And the tape you would go around like, you know, like all your teammates, but it would take maybe a month for you to get that to get that right. game. So <laughs> yeah, but see, but it, see, Fred, Shemaine, Shemaine and Haley don't know what it, what life is like without internet. They don't know right. what that's like. Oh, they don't know how yeah. hard that is. Bit, you want to talk little about little growing different. up tough? That's mm-hmm. growing up tough. Right. <laughs> exactly. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. I got VHS tapes, hold but that was about it. That was that was the end. No, no, no. Listen, or listen, like listen. That. I grew up in Nigeria. I yeah, so it's the same brother. I know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Respect. Respect. I I told tone this already and um i took one of them 23 and me tests i got my lineage is nigerian so that's dope i, I can see it i can see it. you ain't even need to tell i can see it that's, huh? that's, that, that's dope <laughs> my, my, my lineage is nigerian so it's interesting fred, fred that y'all too that you talked about the dream team because remember yeah. during that time we didn't think about basketball exploding go- globally like that all i was thinking was we gotta get the gold medal back because we lost in 88 that's all yeah. i'm thinking i'm not thinking that yo this thing is going to be huge and now basketball is going to expand and it's going to be even bigger now. No, all I was thinking was we lost to Russia. We got to get the, we got to get these guys and we got to get the gold medal back. Not realizing that basketball is now going to be huge and it's going to have an effect on guys like you two. No, it, yeah. that's, that's, a, that's awesome. No, it did. It did. And, uh, and she please, please share with us, uh, how, I know, I know 1992, you know, you were like a little young buck, you know, you didn't know nothing about basketball, right. but I know that what was your, uh, when you first heard of like the 1992 dream team, you know, you now, you as a basketball player back in the days, you know, growing up in Nigeria, what that represented to you, you know what I mean? Like when you heard of like, oh, this team was crazy. They were beating everybody by 30, 35 plus. So, was- so I was born December, 1995. My fault. Uh, right. uh, <laughs> um, and at that point, you know, I was in Nigeria and I moved to Australia when I was three. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, it, the only sports that I cared about was track, soccer and WWE wrestling. Right. Mm-hmm. And then this guy named LeBron came along and that's when I started, you know, watching and falling in love with just watching basketball. So I started doing my research. And obviously when I when I, Excuse you me. know, you knew you knew the name Michael Jordan, obviously. But when I got to my point of learning about the, you know, the dream team, this was probably 2008, 2009. Mm-hmm. It was just like fascinating. It was something that that I felt like I wouldn't be able to understand because I wasn't there in that moment. And I'm glad, you know, the last last dance came out because you could see the aura that these guys had and mm-hmm. when they walked around and just the influence. And 
obviously the impact that they had will be forever because it changed how the NBA worked. It changed the international players. Like there's probably 20, 10 to 15 international players that could get drafted tonight. And all of that is a byproduct of what 1992 did for basketball. And obviously to send 11 out of 12 NBA all-stars to represent their country, you know, it, it helped these, it helped other European teams focus even more and try to compete because yeah, you, yeah. you see now it's not easy for the U S to win. these. International games. game is definitely caught up 100%. Not, it has. Yes, not. it has. Exactly. Yeah. So the yes, three best players in the league are you're, you're from overseas, right? It's like Giannis Jokic and Joel Embiid. Like that's mm-hmm. so last, fantastic. Last, last four MVPs, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Aren't yeah. American born aren't American born. Yes, exactly. definitely. Yeah. definitely. No, so it's, 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 they're definitely influential. I wish I was, alive to see, you know, their impact in person, but, you know, grateful for them. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I, I heard, I heard you played up, uh, you played against someone else that we know uh, recently with uh, my squad, Olympia, of course. Um, mm-hmm. You had a little matchup with, with Shaq. Um, is that, is that correct? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did Shaq. I hear correctly. Is yeah. he as good as he says he is? Is he yeah. as good as he says he is? <laughs> Shaq. Yeah, Shaq, Shaq is – he's incredible. I, I'm a big fan of his game. Um, you know, they unfortunately beat us in the match that would have sent us to the final. You know, we had a meltdown in the third quarter. We scored two points. Don't know how that happened. Um, mm-hmm. But he was, he was a big – he was a big, you know, help for them all season. Um, and he's doing his thing. He just got rewarded with a contract extension over there, one of the best teams in Europe. So, that's dope. You know, I'm happy for him. He's he's a great player, and I heard that he knows how to debate. You know, I got to debate him sometime on basketball. But he's, he's, uh, I don't know. There's a reason he doesn't do it anymore, so I don't know. Uh-oh. 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 Let's, 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 yeah, let's, let's, uh, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's go. Move on. It's kind of, it's kind of one of, it's kind of like one of your boys saying, yo, he can play. you like, yeah, he kind of nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so. He's kind of nice. Yeah, all right. So, I'll be yeah. I'll be better. Oh, man. And, uh, Fred, for, for you, we've heard that, um, for the Olympics next season for 2024, that you're going to be an amb- ambassador for France. Um, yeah. And also, I know that you you really have a heart, I guess, for some of these younger athletes um, that exactly. you want to kind of build up, mature, pour into. Um, so tell us a little bit about that and also what you can, uh, what you're expecting from the Olympics next season. Well, uh, the Olympics, you know, it's some, it's a, uh, it's the biggest event, you know, like as for sports, you know what I mean? Because you know mm-hmm. that every type of, uh, anybody who loves sports, uh, amateur, semi-pro, professional, everybody's going to be following, you know, the Olympics. I really think that, you know, um, sports, it's, uh, sports reunite people, you know, it's, a it's a, it's a big room with different, you know, discipline, you know, you know all, all kind of people and everything. Yeah. But when you play sports, you tend to forget, who's white, who's black, who's Christian, who's Muslim, you know, right. or who's like democratic uh, Republican. So uh, I'm really excited, you know, for friends like to be able to uh, to host, you know, the Olympics. Yeah. But what I'm expecting for it is like, especially with what happened with COVID, you know, you know, those two years when all those kids, you know, were blocked, we were all blocked at home, but, you know, those kids, you know, with like inspiration, dream, goals and everything, kind of kind of get shut down so what i'm expecting from the olympic is to actually reboost you know the love mm-hmm. of sports and really give give us you know uh more hopes you know sure. we have seen so much going on in this world nowadays you know violence war uh, misunderstanding or you know inflation that i think that it would be a good thing for the world you know to pretty much get all together to maybe not for not forget you know, but to just be reunited around, uh, around joy, you know, true right. value, you know, to be uh, inspiration, to be able to see uh, those future, you know, mm-hmm. MJ, LeBron, uh, Cal Lewis, you know, all that, you know, all that together, especially, right. especially that now everybody wants, you know, wants to do their own thing with themselves. I think that the world needs, you know, that event to come quicker than uh, 2024 if it was possible right you know, i think it would impact it would impact a lot of uh a lot of uh young guys young girls you know yeah. in the new generation so that's what i'm expecting so now my job you know as far as like you know the uh 
inside the Olympics is to pretty much like uh, give back, you know, to the youth. Mm -hmm. You know, just being inspiration. I was that kid, you know, when I was 12, you know, growing up looking at MJ's tapes. And then after that, I had the opportunity to meet up with uh, Olivier Saint-Jean, uh, a.k.a. Tariq Abdulwad, who was the first uh, French players, you know, to get drafted, you know, in the NBA. A lot of people think that Tony is the first one, but no disrespect to Tony, and I know him. Now, Tony, you know, the first one, you know, so people need to, we need to bring back the truth, you know, like this is what, you know, like, this is what the OGs uh, we're here for. But right. because of Tariq, you know, I had the opportunity to come to the States uh, to live, to live a beautiful experience, you know, to play basketball in America, which is like the dream of every basketball player in the world. So now is my turn to just give back and give the best, the best advice, you know, for the young, for all these young kids who want to become professional, but it's not going to happen for everybody. But at the end of the day, you know, is to push them, you know, through a positive way to achieve their own goals. That's right. about it. That's, that's, I remember really well said just before you do that, because I just quick 30 seconds of that's why my people started the Olympics was to bring people together in peace mm -hmm. and to have discussions like you sure. can forget at the Olympics wasn't just about the athletic competition. World no. leaders would come together, tribal leaders before it was like when it was just Greece would come together and like talk and have conversations about how to make things better. So we do need to get back to that. Sorry. Well, interesting. Go ahead. Real, real interesting that you brought that up about the Olympics. Cause I remember in 2000, Kobe Bryant was not on the Olympic team and I was trying to figure out what, what was going on. Well, he ended up getting married that summer. He couldn't play in the Olympics. And I remember Mehmet Okor, who used to play, he's from Turkey, he used to play for the Jazz. And he said, quote, if the Turkish national team would have made the Olympics that year, my wedding would have got pushed back. I didn't realize how big it a deal. A lot, yeah. I didn't realize how big a deal the Olympics were in Europe to these yeah. other players. And I don't just mean basketball. I just mean the Olympics as a whole. So when you talk about basketball players alone being Olympic athletes in other countries, Turkey, Greece, that's a pretty big deal to them. So it's interesting you talk about how significant it is. Because I didn't I would, realize that. I would like to interject. I think yeah. for a lot of a lot of European kids, and maybe now it's different, but especially 10, 15, 20 years ago, mm -hmm. a lot of their dreams was to represent their national team at a World Cup, at Olympics, mm -hmm. yeah. or, and play in the Euro League for, you know, in their nearest team, more than playing in the NBA. Right. The NBA is overseas for a lot of those guys. And now it's changing more because you see it's, you know, it's, it's very possible now. But back then, a lot of it was, you know, playing for the national team and, Right. And I think it was flip flopped a little bit compared to American kids. It wasn't wasn't no really excitement playing for America until the dream team. But that makes yeah. sense. That does. That makes because it seemed like it's a bigger deal to play for the Nigerian national team or, or the Turkish national team than it did playing for the playing in the NBA, because it sounded like playing in Europe. That was more realistic. It was, it was right there. Olympics right. is every four years, you know. Right. I mean, you, I, see, I, listen, I you, see, you see it in, in, in football, soccer, football a lot, where mm -hmm. they go play for these teams to make their money, but they're most proud of when they play for Brazil or Argentina. Yeah. or yeah. That's, whatever, fair. Whatever. that's That's where they get the most pride from. The other thing's a paycheck. It's nice. It's a big paycheck. Mm -hmm. But there's more pride in playing for your country. Absolutely. Speaking right. of, I, I know, Chima, you mentioned that you played soccer or wanted to play soccer, but did either of you, because I know a lot of play, players are, you know, play multi multiple sports right to kind of change their body or to develop in different ways develop different muscle groups but uh did you did you both play other sports at all before you engaged in in basketball yeah i mean i played i played a couple other sports for fun i feel like i'm a natural born athlete um maybe i you know i I feel like yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Right. Say so it's a Nigerian <laughs> thing <laughs> <laughs> It's a Nigerian but, thing, H. Yeah, yeah. 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 Good at everything. But, oh, <laughs> hey, hey, chill, man. You know what, though? If we all go back, we're all from there. So you're not saying Same, much. Same, brother. Yeah, that's right. That's Same, right. brother. So, but I'm a, I feel like I'm a natural-born athlete. So, yeah, I played. I played and I was decent at a lot of other sports. But I'm, like, focused. And I knew that I wanted to be an athlete growing up. And it was until I was 13, like, soccer, football was the only thing that, like, it had 90, 95% of my love. And then basketball came around and then it changed. But mm -hmm. I can still, you know, like I can go out there and play badminton and, you know, 
soccer and all these things. But, you know, now, yeah, it's just basketball. Yeah, you committed. Yeah. I'm committed. Okay. What about you, Fred? Well, to, well, for me, it was running the track because I, I just used to love running around, you know, doing all kind of all kind of BS, you know. So I guess my cousin, you know, to actually be able to contain me, she was like, she talked to my mom and she was like, yo, he runs too much. So, hey, put him on the track. So that's what I did. And it was a good thing because actually running the track helped me out after, you know, like during my career, how to mm-hmm. properly run, you know, how to how to be able like to run as a big uh, as a big man, you know, to run down the lane. As German, you will know, big defense, run, <laughs> run the lane, and go get the easy mm-hmm. bucket. So, yes, yeah, exactly. sir. So that's what I did. But just like Shime, you know, coming from like a, an African family, soccer was the number one sport. So, and it was like everybody in the streets, you know, we used to play soccer a lot. I used to play tennis table as well, you know, but I know that in the States, you know, you play tennis table just for fun or just mm-hmm. to play beer pong, you know, so <laughs> a few times. But that's all I did. I pretty much like play basketball my entire yeah. life. When I stopped, you know, I haven't I haven't played basketball five on five in about five years, you know. Yeah. But now I'm just like I just ride the bike, you know. Just I do some uh, Pilates, you know, yoga, just trying to get uh, to keep my body, you know, healthy yeah. and just just to be there for my kids. That's well, since I mean. we yeah. since, since we since we on the subject of basketball, you guys were coming out of college in the draft process. Can you expand on a little bit about how your how your journey went when you came out of school? Like did you work out for a particular team? Did you did did you did you have anything like that going on when you were coming out of college, both of you? For for me, no, I didn't mm-hmm. I didn't work out with any teams. Um I knew that I would have to go overseas and okay. that was kind of like my focus. I had a bad agent at the time so that kind of was also a part of it it happens and, yeah you know I, I i fired her three months into me signing with her and then you know obviously i'm not a, like i'm not a victim but that led right. to me not having any opportunities because people and people that you know you, you said that a couple of times and i just i want to go back to that because people forget and i say this all the time the odds of making the NBA and stay like not just staying in the NBA, making the NBA, you have better odds of being struck by lightning twice. <laughs> so when we say that it goes beyond natural ability, hard work, yeah. right? But right. also being in the right situation, sometimes knowing the right people, getting right. a lucky break, being yeah. put in the right situation. Because a lot of times a player goes, and you know this, you go to a team that just you might be redundant, right? They're yeah. trying you out in summer league, but they got seven guards and you're a guard. So it just doesn't make sense. So they move on from right. you and people don't see you. So many things have to go right and only one thing has to go like partially wrong not to make it. And right. it could be anything. Like you said, it could be politics. It could be health. It could be, like I said, situation. So so we're going to get back to the draft. And with that, I'm going to ask because we're going to start going through the 10 and we'll start with one because we know the first pick. We talked about Wemby a lot. Him going to San Antonio. That's the right situation, right? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, there? Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Especially, with, especially with Greg, Greg Popovich, you know, great coach. I think that, and I think he's the, Greg Popovich is the, I would call him the international coach because I think he's the one who has the most knowledge when it comes to like international mm. basketball game, yeah. Euro game. Uh, South America's game. I mean, mm-hmm. worldwide, he knows a lot about the game. I mean, we've seen it all. You know, if you look at, I think that San Antonio got to be the team who who had had so many international players. You know, going, I mean, going through uh, institution and with success. You know, when we look at it, they're like, they, okay, we, 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 we haven't. Uh, seen yeah, people forget players, Duncan. You know, people forget Duncan. Duncan. Probably Boris Boris Dio, uh, right? Tony well, Manu, 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 Tony Parker, Rizio, Splitter. Yeah. Tiago, exactly. Tiago Splitter. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. Patty, I Mills, what... Patty Mills was there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, yeah, Patty Mills. Sure. sure. Exactly. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, he has. They had so so much history with international basketball. You think about that. That's interesting. So I think that, especially with what Tony said about. How Greg, you know, and uh, Tim and Timmy actually treated him back in the days. You know, when you go through that and you actually come out of it that successful, I think that the best place for right. Wimby with his mindset is the Spurs. I don't think that if he were to go to any type, I mean, it would have been good, you know, for him to go to any other team. But when we look at as far as like players' the development, you know what I mean? 
who we want Wemby to be, who who himself, he wants to be the top. He wants to be one of the best players in the league. I think the Spurs are the right fit. Not the Knicks, Tone. They would they would screw him <laughs> no, up. No, not, not the no, Knicks, no. Tone. The Knicks would trade him. Keep the him away from him. the Knicks. They wreck um, him. Okay, so that's 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 the first pick. We all agree he's the first pick. Yeah. So number two is Charlotte. Do you guys have any kind of feeling? Are they going with Miller, who says Paul George is the goat, or are they going with Scoot? Like, do you think they do something crazy? He did say that. I love I love everybody laughs when I say Paul. He did, George he did is the say goat. That. that's what he oh, yeah. said. I seen it. I seen it. Yeah, he did say that. Yeah, he did. <laughs> How much should PG pay him? <laughs> that, that, that look right. Nah, that look right there is like, yo, did you really say that on camera? Man? You <laughs> wow for saying that. No way did you say that on camera. No. Yeah. You did yeah. Say that. <laughs> I mean, got a future as a podcaster. <laughs> <That's> a good... <laughs> I take right. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, that that one is tricky. I would say Charlotte. They've a few of the guys they've drafted have gotten into a lot of trouble outside of basketball. Yeah, you and know, Miller so, has a bit of that reputation. And in the Miller past, has right? that. I mean, mm. So keep it going. You know, both of those guys <laughs> are like both of those guys. Sounds are, like a perfect fit. <laughs> So I think they're gonna draft Brandon Miller based on their history, but yeah, mm-hmm. like I've seen, I've seen Scoot, I've seen Scoot in person, and Scoot is super, super impressive. Obviously, Brandon is too, and I know um, this guy named James Clark. He was training Brandon this summer, and he says that he's like he can go into the NBA right now and drop twenty a game. Um, so I mean, you can't really go wrong with either pick, but. When it comes to both guys of being at a similar level, I would take the person that doesn't have any sort of record outside of basketball, whether he did do anything or not. Just that's me. So you feel See, like Scoot might be that that kind of better fit for for Charlotte? Um, I think then, I think Scoot Scoot would be really good for anyone. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you, if you I was Charlotte, it. I would take Scoot. Would that take might be Scoot. the safe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then so Fred, I don't know if you know. Uh, too much about Brandon Miller, but obviously the Pelicans have kind of been, there's been a lot going on in the news mm-hmm. regarding maybe Zion move to Portland, um, exactly. pairing up with Dame. So if they are able to get Brandon or Scoot, I mean, one of them is coming. Do you have any idea of what maybe could happen with Zion or Brandon Ingram or CJ or whoever they decide to move off of? I mean, I mean, honestly, with the Pelicans right now, I think they're really in the in that turn where they have to make a big decision uh, regarding Zion because mm-hmm. we all know that we're expecting Zion to be to be like the next uh, the next phase of uh, of the Pelicans. But when you look at it, Justin Ingram, McCollum, you know, they're doing the job. You know, like yeah. I think they have like the 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 duet that they've been expecting for so long, even mm-hmm. though you know. CJ is getting is a vet. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I think that they should keep Zion. You know, I don't. I, I don't think they should move anybody really, because as uh, Shimi knows, you know, he's playing for Monaco. I think that Monaco has been successful because Monaco they were able to keep three, four players. You know, that have known the team, that 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 actually had that DNA. You know, to win. Mm-hmm. If you, I'm going to give you the best example. Okay. Look at PhD in soccer, you know, and we all know it, and we all know that you can have the best player, you know, in the world on the, in the like on the same team. It doesn't mean you're gonna win. You know, you gotta you gotta find the right fit. So I think that the Pelicans right about now, even though Zion is injured and everything, you have to give him time, just like Philly did with uh, Joel and Bill. You know, trust the process. You right. know, and if you started just like. Flipping players, you know, just like switching up things, thinking that you might be able to be a contender, it's not going to happen. Look at Milwaukee. Look at Golden State. You know what I mean? Even Boston. Denver. Denver has Denver. been working on these for like years now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I think the Pelicans should really stay put. They might maybe trade, you know, <clears throat> players, but I don't think that if they touch CJ or Ingram or Zion, they mm-hmm. might they might actually block the chance to actually, you know, follow up with the past two seasons when they've been there. You know what I'm saying? They've been there, but Zion mm-hmm. has to t- has to stay healthy. But as we all know, it's business. You know, it's it's the business in the NBA. Mm-hmm. But Fred, know, Fred, 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 don't don't forget. Before Zion got hurt, the Pelicans were first in the West. Don't forget that. Number exactly. Uno. They were number yeah, uno. They're not number blowing. One. You're not blowing nothing up. Num- you know, number one. Yeah, yeah, number I understand. one. But you know the business. You know, 
You know, mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, we might think that everything is right and out of the blue, they're going to blow up some, you know, and you know, and you know, the NBA, you know, like, you know, yeah. how that works, you know, how that works today. It's not only about basketball. It's about also the, the, the business part of things, you know, and there's mm-hmm. a lot of things that all you guys, we know about it. You know, sometimes you're not going to trade a player because they, you know, that he has about like five million followers, you know, Instagram or whatever. So that actually affects, you know, the, the, the marketing aspect of the business, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That's you know. So when you put that in, that sometimes we, you know we don't have we yeah. don't have all the all the information. Why they're gonna trade so and so and so and so? But as he, far he might be asking for to get out too. Exactly yeah. too, you know. So we don't know. But if I was you, I wouldn't touch a damn thing, you know. With, you know, with the Pelicans because they they're like they're so close, you know, to be uh, a good contender, you know. Right. No waste. So, and but, since we, and since we are, and, and and since we're talking about trade guys, well, we got the Portland Trailblazers at the number three pick, and now we're on the other side of that spectrum because we've got a guy in Damian Lillard who's been there for twelve years, and they've probably gotten everything that they're going to get out of Dame, right? Yeah. So, with that being said, where do they? Which way? Which direction do they go? I personally think that if Scoot is available, we go with Scoot, and I'm ready to move on from Dame, and we build a unit with Scoot. And Simons, that's Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum 2.0. And we're gonna build a unit around those two. Like, yeah, it's, it's gotta be time. Like, what Dame, what are we doing? Like, I, I mean, now he's finally <laughs> now he's finally talking about it. He's talking about it. Like he's right. talking about it on live, saying, you know, yeah. how I trade me to the Lakers, like obviously as a joke, but he's like open to it now, even though he's always said it's a business, you know, it's a business. And every year the Dame gets older, that's a little bit less value that he has that's what happens he's, he's decreasing crazy. his value that's sure happened. yeah sure yeah. if i'm the trailblazers i'm hoping charlotte picks brandon miller so we can get scoot and then we trade dame for a big time power forward a big time you know center move Nurkic out of there and then let him and simons because simons proved that he's like that i've seen him in yeah. person yeah. that boy is that boy is special have someone that's pairing up with him like you said dame and cj 2.0 they can do that. Get a lot of pieces back for Dame as much as you can and move on. Thank him for his yeah. services and, and hope um, Charlotte picks Brandon Miller. That's what if, I would say. If, if, if DeJounte Murray went for four ones, if, if, if DeJounte Murray or Rudy Gobert went for four ones, if I'm Portland and I'm moving off Dame, because again, it's obvious that we're starting over, right? It's obvious that we're starting over. I think yeah. Scoot and, yeah. and Simons are really good building blocks to start over. That's what but I'm, I'm saying. probably going to have to build it through the draft. I need as many draft picks I, as I can possibly get. Now, I understand the aspect of the money, right? I understand no. that the money has to match because Damian Lillard's contract, what he just signed. But more than anything, I am looking for draft picks because I'm going to build this unit through the draft. Because, again, Portland isn't Los Angeles. It isn't Miami, right? It's not no. a very attractive place. So if we're going to build this thing, we're going to have to get it right in the draft. But I think I think Portland has a lot of love for Dame that they would – they would trade Dame where he wants to go. And oh, they're not just going to throw ready. him away. No, they, they, they're not going to do that. No, Portland fans are it. asking. They're like, please, like, go. We want you to go. And I feel like when your own fan base is saying, like, we want you to be free and, like, we want you to experience winning or <laughs> at least having the opportunity, I, I feel like then, like you said, he, maybe he's finally starting to, like, open up. Except I'm keep, I keep seeing headlines, not that – we headlines mean anything these days, uh, yeah. as we saw with the Porzingis trade. But – you know, it, it's saying that like, oh, Portland's like shut down any discussion about trading Dame. So, do you think that's just uh, what they're putting out there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, it's just yapping. <laughs> it's just yapping. No, I, I, I think. Well, I think, I think there's two. I think that's it's du- that's a double edged sword. I think they, I really legit think Portland wants to keep Dame and mm-hmm. and make him a winner there. But what that also does, it drives up his value. So they're like, hey, we want to keep him. So if you want to get him you're going to have to make it like really worth our while because he's not a yeah, guy we're trying to get rid of. So they're, they're, yeah. they're, they're trying, I think they're trying to do both things at the same time, which is smart. That's, That's what they should do. Yeah. Cause yeah. It, you see, you see what Bradley bill got traded for. Yeah. Like how? Yeah. But uh, uh, different situation uh, though. Washington very, is very much. That's why, trying that's to why I agree yeah. with, with yeah. what you're yeah. saying. That's why I agree with what you're saying. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. It's um, gotta be time for Dame. It's gotta be. It has yeah. to be. Yeah. 
more. I think so, 100%. Um, but yeah, so I don't know how much longer we have, you guys, or what you have planned for the day. Um, but if we have like maybe 10 more minutes from you guys, um, yeah, we can go we can, through. Can. You sure? Okay, okay. Thank yeah. you, guys. Um, so yeah, there's a couple other names I wanted to ask you about the draft. Then maybe we'll touch on um, the Boston trade that just happened. And then you guys can let us know where to find you and where people can, you know, support you. But um, yeah, so the, 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 t- uh, let me see where so number four pick was Amen Thompson, right? Um, do you guys know much about him or are there any other names? I know Fred uh Bilal Bilal. Bilal. Um, yeah, Bilal, yeah, Bilal. Yeah, yeah, Bilal yeah, Kulibari, Bilal Kulibari and uh and uh, Ryan Rupert. I actually played with uh with Ryan's dad, you know, back in the days in Limoges. Rest in peace, Thierry. You know, so I played with him and actually his dad is the one who inspired me to become actually like uh, a good defender. You know, because I was a young back on the team at the time, and uh, his dad here he was uh, he was uh, he was playing the four, but he was like uh, he was a huge defensive presence. You know, and he played with the national team and everything. So, shout out to the Reapers family. You know, shout mm-hmm. out to uh, to him. You know, because I know hopefully he's gonna he's in the steps and uh, following up his uh, his sister, but they deserve it. You know, and I know that his dad, you know, is watching over them, and so so uh, so I wanted to. Uh, to send a little, send him a little good luck charm, you know, for tonight, you know, and mm-hmm. everything, and everything happened for a reason. That was that little, that was that little quote. But uh, Bilal, Bilal to me, it's a, uh, I mean, Shime, please uh, tell me because you're, you know, you're the one playing against him and everything you you've seen and all. But Bilal is a, is a late bloomer, as as we will say. But to like. He has so much potential that I think that if he gets, I would love for Bilal to go to the Spurs as well. I don't think we're getting two top ten picks. I don't think we're getting two top ten picks. No, 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 I know, I know, but no disrespect. But I think that if he can get, if he can get to a team with a coach who will actually develop his skills as a guard, you know, not like, not like Siku. Not like Seku, you know. Seku Dumbuya was a different type of a uh, freak or athlete. You know what I mean? Bilad is like a sponge. More you throwing at him, more he's gonna absorb, and he's gonna throw it back at you even better. You know. What I mean? So he's still learning the, you know, he's still learning the game, but he has that. He has that American, you know, swag in him. You know, when it comes to play, he ain't scared. You know, and that's what I like with the kid. Right. So uh, I, I'm sure that. Any type of challenges he's gonna face or walls, he's gonna hit him, but he's gonna be he's, he's still gonna stand. You know, he's he's that type of kid who doesn't doesn't give up. And if you guys remember uh, a few years ago, I mean like more than ten years ago, we had this guy called Amarasai. Amarasai, you know, he he won the Nike Battleground back in two thousand and two, mm-hmm. and he played twenty two years here in the league. He has that type of mentality. You know, that street mentality. That's Bilal for me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When you look at him, you know, like he's all young, you know, nice and everything. He's like what we call to him in friends. He's a KI. He's a gangster. You know, when, when it's time to mm-hmm. play. Scared of no like so, like that. Yeah, so that that, mm-hmm. that that fire he has and the skills that he's developing still, when you look at it, he came from the bench to being a starter against mm-hmm. you guys. And Vincent, you know, like Vincent Collet, the coach, I had him back in 2006 when I was playing for Le Mans. You know, when Vincent, if Vincent made that decision to put him in a starting five, that was like back in the days when I was playing with Nicolas Batum. You know, that means he sees something in him. And we all saw how Nicolas Batum developed his game, you know, throughout the years. Sadly, when he went with, the, with Charlotte, his game kind of went down. But mm. that's part, you know, that's part of the history. But Bilal got that thing, you know, in him. And I think that if he gets picked with the right team, well, actually, he's going to give him about 15 to 22 months, you know, and we and we shall see. It's going to translate, sure. Yeah. So, and, so and, 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 I, I want to get some sleepers. I know because just because we're running short on time, we have a couple of super chats for you guys. So I want to yeah. pop them up and like, give you guys a chance to answer. And then maybe we'll get like maybe – what okay, I'd like to get good. is someone in the draft that maybe we haven't talked about that a name that we should all just pay attention to keep in the back of our mind. So I'll let you okay. give you some time to think about that while I pull these up. 
Um, okay. So let's see. We have this. This one's just more of a statement um, that Bilal will be a star. A star. <laughs> They believe in is that him. is that do we do we think he's a star or is he going to be like a really good serviceable player? I think he'll be a really good service. He should be a really good serviceable player. I think it'll take some time with Bilal. Right. I think NBA teams. Yeah. I think he may get you know picked really high tonight because of his potential and they haven't right. seen him too much and like his measurements are outstanding they compare to Andrew Wiggins and guys like that so mm-hmm. i think he has a chance to be like <clears throat> a really good 3 and d player and there's nothing wrong with that playing nothing so so, nothing so if wrong. you're a gm if you're a gm are you taking him top 10 if i'm a gm and i've seen him only in games overseas i'm reaching for him in the top 10 and i know i will bet well, you my played money. against him you played against him so i, I know if you want to toe the line toe the line but i want you to cross it if you can you played against him. Would you take him top ten? I would take. You him don't top have 10. to answer if you don't. I would <laughs> take him top ten. I would take him. You would top take 10. him. Okay, okay. Because the NBA is all about potential now. Yes, this it kid, is. Okay. Exactly. This kid was supposed to so be. So he in the can draft. develop, right? This Just kid was supposed to be in the draft time. next year. So that tells you what he's done oh, this year. Okay. That, that makes was the, sense. going into this past mm-hmm. season. He was, you know, he played against Bronny when Bronny came to Paris. He had yeah. twenty five in that game. So people were like, hmm. And then when he was playing with, with Wemby's team, he wasn't starting until December. And then he was catching a putback dunk and alley oops and going coast to coast. And he just shot up like that. I think he's the biggest riser. And because of that, if I was a GM, I would believe in my coaching staff to develop him and I would group him in the top 10. Fair. Mm-hmm. All right, that's yeah. fair. Yeah. That's fair. Uh, drink More Water says, as an Ethiopian, because I had to say he says that because I'm not, uh, <laughs> I want to say welcome. Uh, are there any important historical buildings or monuments in Nigeria? We have the Church of Our Lady, Mary of Zion, which may contain the Ark of the Covenant. I would say the most the most historical architecture is definitely Aso Rock. And for me, it doesn't really doesn't really do much for me because it's it's a giant rock, but you can see it when you're driving through uh, the capital and it's 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 important to a lot of people. I'm not going to lie and be like, oh, my God, it means a lot to me. But Astro Rock is definitely the, the place to visit if you're in Abuja. And then in Lagos, there's just there's a lot of things as well. Bad. All right. Sweet. Nice. Uh, let's see. Vamp. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Uh, do you think Wemby will play center his whole career? Is there a world where he can play the three eventually and the Spurs would have a giant lineup? I do. I do think that. Yeah, yeah. I do. Well, well, you said small that, Fred. He plays like a guard. Like he, he like, like call him a small four. Yeah. He's seven four. I, I mean, he's like a he's a hybrid. I mean, this guy, you know, when you seen Giannis, you seen Porzingis, you know, playing and everything. You know, back in the days, we were like, damn, you know, like Porzingis, you know, you were like, how how are you gonna defend the guy? But he can move. That's the thing. It's like mm-hmm. Wemby has footwork, and that's the problem. You know, when you have uh, a seven-two guy, you can move that well. Yo, it's a problem. I yeah. mean, I mean, I mean, Shame, you know how hard it is to play defense. A matchup nightmare. It's a matchup yeah, exactly. nightmare, yo. Yeah. On the so, is there a world? Forward? Are we are we gonna see a seven-foot-four, seven-foot-two power forward and a seven-foot-three center in San Antonio? Tone, I'm telling you, Tone. I, me, Fred, I'm telling you, Fred. Me and me and me and Tone had this conversation. Two months ago, when Wimby yeah. was 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 coming out, and I told Tone, "This guy is the future of the NBA. This is what the NBA is going to look like in the next ten to fifteen years. It's going to be a bunch of six foot ten to seven foot four, super super nice with, the, I, with the basketball, long jump shot shooting, rim running guys." Tone's issue is, I he said it's impossible that, because there's not he, enough. Seven he, he foot doesn't two, think seven foot three skilled players to, to have. Well, that's, that's, that, that, that's because we haven't the seen league. them. Well, Tone, Tone, look, if you look at, if you look, uh, you got him calling me Tone. If you, hey, listen, <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, listen, my bad. If, if you look at the Euroleague, if, if you look at Olympiacos, if you look at Fenerbahce, if you look at, uh, uh, if you look at, uh, 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 what should we call him? Uh, Maccabi, all those teams now, they all have all of the threes. They're all like six nine, six ten. You know they're tall. You know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So when you think about it, uh, back in the days, you know when I played back in 06 against uh, 
Thiago Spiro, Scola. Scola was the, the best big man, you know, in the Euroleague, skill-wise. You know, skill-wise. I'm not saying yeah. that size-wise. When Scola came to the league, I mean, he, st- he did have his career, you know, playing in the league and everything, mm-hmm. but he was playing the four. Right, now, today, right. you have, like, those seven-footers even in college. They don't play the five. They're like, mm-hmm. they can play the four, even stretch a little bit at the three. Wemby today is a seven, is, is seven two. Janice is still building, you know, his skills, you know, as far as like the guard skills and everything. Now Janice start putting three. If Janice started, you know, actually working on his like periphery type of game, you know, like two, three years ago, Janice would be a problem today. LeBron, LeBron actually works on his on his uh, three point shooting, you know, throughout his career. Mm-hmm. So let's put it this way: we already have a seventh footer who's ruling the NBA. His name mm-hmm. is the Joker. He is the slowest guy on earth. He's a seven footer. Now you got now you got Janice, seven one playing the one two three. I don't even know three four five whatever you want. Porzingis is still there, you know, doing work. We know with Washington. Now you got Wemby. Uh, oh, uh, ball. All grand. Oh, yeah, ball, ball. Right. You know? So each team's going to have one. One super point. guy. Not gonna be it's one guy. It's, you know, it's, not, it's not going to be everybody. It's not. Yeah. Gonna, like, I, 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 could see, I could see more a skilled seven footer at the three and like a six foot ten center who's like a, not, you know, a bruiser. Yeah, not, or, yeah. Just because you're, you're seven foot doesn't mean you're allowed to play the three. Wemby is no, that. Right. Right. Wemby no, that doesn't. Wemby is that. Exactly. Guy. Wemby is really a four. He's mm-hmm. a four. He's gonna but be he'll be able to play three and a five. He'll depending on the okay, matchup. Bounce around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, depending on the matchup, he can. You know, in Europe, he gets to sit in the paint because there's no defensive three seconds, and he intimidates shooters that are out of the three because you know he can block your shot. He'll and cover a lot of right. He can cover a lot of areas. Too much sure. so, mm-hmm. Depending on the matchup, he'll guard some fives and he'll guard some. He'll guard some fives. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Last one, and then we'll uh, get your sleepers. Uh, where we go? Here we go. Uh, to both of you guys, who was the best player you went up against in your career? And Ooh. an extra one for you, Shemay. What do you what do you gain the most? What did you gain most from playing in the NBA? Fred, you go first. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So the best player uh, I went against in my career, the one who gave me issues, and I was tired to play him. I'm not gonna lie to you. It would be. <laughs> It would be it would be my boy Ronnie Turia, college. <laughs> yeah, Ronnie Turia. I love Ronnie Turia. It would be Ronnie because Ronnie, you know, at the time with Gonzaga, they were loaded. You know, mm-hmm. uh, oh my God. Yeah, Ronnie Turia in college, definitely. And pro, I would say Luis Luis Cola when he used to mm-hmm. play for uh, Asconia. Mm-hmm. And uh, Baby Shaq, I got I to bring Baby Shaq in, so fuck this Chachanikis, because damn, I, I, I had to say, at the time, I was like, I was 225. Greek, I think that's the Greek you guy, guys, right? you guys know You guys know who Baby Shaq is, right? Baby yeah. Shaq. Because yeah. a lot of faces, like, you yeah. know. That's, yeah. the Greek, that's the Greek dude, okay. Yeah, yeah that's the Greek, Greek, exactly. Greek Shaq. You tell yeah, your cousin Greek, there's a Greek Shaq yeah. in town. Yeah. That's, that's the, the Greek, Greek Shaq. I'm not going to lie yeah. to you, that was my first year playing in the EuroLeague. And we played a lot. The first game was in Le Mans. When this guy came out, you know, like, you know, when you warm up, you kind of look, you know, on the other side, look what they're doing, what, you know, you're mm-hmm. looking at your matchup. Yo, I seen this guy post up, did a turnaround baseline, and he went on the other side and dunk it so hard and so fast. I was like, damn. I'm up, he's I'm the, up against he's it the, tonight. <laughs> yeah, and he's the I'm big. Up and, it tonight. and my wife, and my wife at the time, she took a picture. And that picture, you see both of us. I swear you couldn't see my body behind his ass. That's <laughs> not for real. Like, that's, that, that's ridiculous. I never seen, he was, he's like a big baby Davis, but but faster. But you know, he was hooked yeah. on his feet. And as soon, you know, he took off the ground, oh, there is no way. He just absorbs you and just come with me. Wow. And I was like, that was hard because, damn, he was like what, about like two hundred and eight, like almost three hundred pounds, moving least, that way. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Uh, hey, Shime, I'm telling you, if you had to play against this guy, yo, you, you know, you're stronger than me, younger than me, but yeah. damn, he used just to make you tight, just to go around him. Yeah. 
was like was tough, you know. But no, no, no. good thing he, he didn't have that much cardio and he was overweight. Thank mm. thanks. You know, thank you for the great thanks for the great him. food, you know, mm, thanks yeah. for the great food. Yeah, yeah. But it was a nightmare because we had to relay ourselves, you know. I was trying to what can I do? He just to post up, just like just throw his big elbows at you, big no. It was a it was trouble. Yeah. Those two guys, yeah, trouble. Trouble. From for me, I think it's it's pretty easy. This is the best guy I've played against. Y'all, y'all can see that. That would be James, yes, sir. Oh. That would be James. Oh, that's yeah. that's James. Oh. Um, yes, that's that's my goat. That's the reason I started watching basketball. That's that's my favorite moment in my career. Eat that it, Tom. Like that looks that looks yeah. like light work. That looks like light work, Trey. I, 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 Eat I, it, Tom. I really, Tom. I really, <laughs> I really, I really player ever. <laughs> oh, you okay? All right, we're not yeah. gonna be. <laughs> we don't need to do that. We can save that don't get him for another day. Don't, don't get him started, man. <laughs> no, don't get but, him started. I mean, that was a preseason game. Obviously, that was this past preseason season. So, <laughs> I, I I played really well against him, but it was just like, yeah, that's my favorite moment in my career. Just because Word. what he means. Word. Mm, um, yeah. That's dope. And that's what dope. I gained most from playing in the NBA, just. <sighs> Honestly, for me, it was like just seeing how it worked and I'm seeing that, okay, all right, a lot of people are one mistake or one situation away from not being where they are. Or mm-hmm. People mm-hmm. are in this situation because of they have a good agent or they have a coach that believes in them and they have the opportunity. Mm-hmm. A lot of people will call guys trash or he's not that good. And I don't believe in doing that. I believe this person is good because of everyone is good at this level, but this person is better or worse because of the situation he's in. Right. That's why, you know, when I got cut, I was like, I wasn't even surprised because I was putting up crazy numbers in the G League and I just wasn't getting a chance. I wasn't getting a call up. You know, I'm mm-hmm. seeing other guys, you know, they play well in the G League and then the next day their their big team is calling them up. And for me, I didn't have that opportunity. So, you know, I, I experienced it and it wasn't what I thought it would be. So I don't have any regrets for the rest of my life of Word. I wish I wish I tried the NBA. No, I tried it and it wasn't for me in that situation. So right. I've met a lot although, of great although it's people. to the Kings, it's 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 bad for the Kings. Because if you were on this on the roster, they would have beat the Warriors. That's all I'm I saying. completely agree. There we go. There we go again. See? <laughs> Y'all screwed up passing on him. Y'all screwed up. Yeah, yo, Ox, uh, Ox but, in the chat, Bob. Yeah, your Bobby. team made a mistake. Mm-hmm. Um, nah, I, I got a lot of love for those guys. They gave me a chance. And me. I just saw Vivek actually when we beat Wemby. And, you know, still a good relationship there. And, yeah, I'm grateful for my time in Sacramento. Wait, um. We'll wrap up here in just a sec, but uh, obviously th- there's such a young team. I I I, I love Sacramento and especially Deere and Sabonis. You know, like there's some really solid guys on that team. But sure. um, can you give us like I know it was such a hard loss losing to Golden State. Who are vets? It was it was to be expected, but they put up such a good fight. Can you give us some like insight into that team's mindset? Because I really believe that we're gonna see the Kings in the playoffs for the next several years. I I, I think they're gonna be that next them and OKC man. Like I think they're gonna be really really special. But since you were there, you know their mindsets. You know that like passion that drives those guys. Can you give us a little insight or a story or something? Yeah, the the Kings the Kings are here. And like, I still say, I feel like I'm still a part of them because I, I talk to half the guys, you know, a lot. Um, but I remember we started off the season 0-4 and, and there was just so much, there wasn't any like doubt. And we had a tough schedule coming up. I remember we had, you know, just obviously in the NBA is just tough when you're focusing on the matchups of the guys that are coming and you're 0-4 and everyone was expecting you guys to be this great team. And um yeah, we just there was no there was no doubts ever. There was no doubts. We went on the run and everyone was like, "Oh my god, the Kings are here." And we never felt like we were playing as good as we should have been playing. We were winning games and like I would remember Mike Brown would come in and be like, "Guys, it was still not good enough." And I'm just like, "Is he serious right now? We just be- we just beat these guys and yeah. That's the like he wasn't joking around about what he what he expected. And you saw in the playoffs, you know, obviously game seven went the way it went, but I think it was an appropriate um, stepping stone for what's to come. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like they're going to make a trade and bring somebody in. I'm hearing Tobias Harris. I'm hearing OG, whoever they need to bring in 
Yeah. They will bring in and Sacramento will be in the playoffs for the next three, four, five years. And yeah, for sure. Yep. I love that. Thank you. Um, all right. Yeah. So we'll we'll let you guys go. I know you have probably a lot to do tonight and, and obviously thank tonight's a, a big night. But um yeah, thank you guys so much. I'm, uh, I'm now London. real quick, real quick before you go. Now yeah, I'm so. I gotta start because I got since I got a part of the PC family, I'm, I'm it's a lot of people that's that's in the Euro League. Now I gotta start paying more attention to the Euro League. So now I got a dude that's that's another dude that's playing in the Euro League and Monaco. Oh, Hi. Yeah, you should have. You should have, yeah. German. I mean, uh, listen, if you want to, yeah, if you want to watch real basketball, you know what right. I mean. Watch the Euro League. You know, I'm, not, I'm about. To, I gotta start paying I'm more attention to the Euro League. I know exactly. these dudes now. Like I'm now, now I know these dudes. I know, I know Shimei. All right, so I know these dudes. So now exactly. I'm gonna start watching more of the Euro League than I do. Go ahead, H. Yeah, no, yeah, I agree with you 100. Well, H, H, H is gonna H is gonna kick us all out. So now I'm gonna jump in and say that I told you this. This is exactly my cousin lives in Athens. And that's exactly what he told me. He said, when he found out my, I'm a nine year old playing basketball, he goes, Has he been watching the Euro League? And I said, No. And he said, You have to get him to watch the Euro League because mm -hmm. there's a different skill set. No. And if he watches no. both, he's going to be able to pick up certain things from both. And, sure. and that's when I kind of told him, Actually, I, I love the Euro League, you know, because I, growing up, I'm Greek, right? I grew up, my favorite team was Olympiacos for soccer and then mm -hmm. eventually for basketball. And he said, oh, you, and I said, oh, I actually know someone who plays for Olympiacos. And he went nuts. He goes, because <laughs> I didn't realize how big, because I'm here, how yeah, big yeah. Olympiacos is in Athens. And he's like, you know Shaq? Oh, my God. And he's like, so you got to you gotta expose them to those other games because there's certain things. Not everybody can be seven foot four and post up or shoot threes like Steph, but they might be able to do some things where some of the skilled guys in or, Europe do or. differently that they can bring in and translate to their game here. So absolutely yeah. in my point about is to start Jay, watching the Euro League. Start watching more yeah. basketball, yeah. Jay. Definitely. Yeah. I'm definitely I got Shamay. So I know a dude. He, he played for Monaco. Yeah. Word. Actually let's go to Monaco and watch a game. He's yes. Right. Let's do the overseas uh overseas let's meet, up, sure. yeah. let's meet up let's meet up at uh, Shamay. I'm gonna be coming in town anyway once a month. Because <laughs> there you go. No 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 for real no <laughs> Because one of my players, this this young kid that I train, is gonna be uh, he just signed with Monaco on the U18 for three years. Yep. So so I'm pretty much like watching over him. So I'm gonna be coming out there once a month. So you know, like so hey, we're just waiting for the rest of the team to meet up in Monaco. Uh, I like it. Right, I'll, I'll, show us to this. Shamil show, show take us to the, the 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 casino where they did that James Bond movie. It is the yeah. quietest yeah. place on earth. I've never heard of casino. Shemay, <laughs> tell, me I'm not, tell me I'm lying. Isn't it the soup like super creepy quiet? No, no. So, 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 it's not like Vegas casinos, but when you get in there, you'll see it's very elegant, and you're not allowed to take. Yeah. Photos. But where they record the movies is in like the back, back, back. So like that's not the main casino, but it's yeah, very, yeah. very it's quiet. quiet. And very, it's quiet, elegant. right? It's weird. It's elegant. It's elegant. It's elegant. It's very elegant. <laughs> okay, elegant. I said creepy. That's the word. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, Fred. Where can uh, where can you know a lot of our of the people that are watching now? Obviously, will want to follow your journeys now that they've you know seen you and, and gotten to know you a bit. So, where can people follow you, and also how can they support you through your your journey right now? Well, listen. You can people can follow me on my IG page, which is Fred that A D J I Fred that A G. You can follow mm -hmm. me up on uh, on this. Uh, I'm not a big fan, you know. I'm not a big, uh, a huge, you know, user of like social media. I'm like, I like to talk face to face, you know, almost cool when it comes to this. But this mm -hmm. is where you can find me. And before I go, Shemay, you got uh, my own boy EJ Roland. Say what up? You know, we used to be. Uh, <laughs> he was. Uh, <laughs> he was my. He was my teammate. and was also my roommate in college. So before the show, it was like it was like she may always show up. Mm -hmm. So tell him what. So I have yeah. to do it because he's coming. He's coming to see me on Sunday. If not, he's gonna whoop my ass. So yeah. I send the message, EJ. If you're online, hey, I send the message to Shimei. There we go. <laughs> appreciate that. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Appreciate yeah. that. Okay, and Shimei, about you too. How can people follow you, support you uh, on your journey now? Uh, yeah, my Instagram is chimdog, C-H-I-M-D-O-Triple-G. Um, yeah, that's that's my, I'm not, 
I'm a bigger Instagram poster than Fred is, but yeah, yeah that's where you can follow me. I play EuroLeague for Monaco, and um, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm you know I got. I, I got we'll I got get the guys. Work. We'll get the guys to put your links. In, yeah, we'll put the links uh, in. Yeah, we'll put the links in. You will. When you see when you see you're being followed by Sports underscore Fluent. Mm-hmm. For sure, no doubt. Follow back and and respectfully, yeah. respectfully, yeah. respectfully, the way you pronounce my first name is Chi Ma. Shima. Shima. Oh, dude, yeah, no, just, tell us, bro. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't want to, you know. <laughs> yeah, don't, don't, hold on. Don't don't know. Know. Shima, listen, my man. Listen, Chima, listen. Chima, let me tell you something. No, no, I love you. quickly, quickly. Chima, I've known my wife mm. since we were four years old. Mm. I first time ever I said her last name correctly was yesterday. Mm. So it is. Uh, she so, got his last name, yeah, by he, the way. He, he, <laughs> she got his last name. She kept it. So jump in, bro. Correct us. Don't worry about it at all. Don't worry about it at all. Nah, so she, my, I, I, I can definitely dig that. My first name is Jermaine. People spell my name with a G. I lose it. That's not the way you spell my name. So don't worry about being. Di- Yo, if I'm saying your name wrong, don't let me say your name wrong. Be yeah. make, sure. make sure I get it right. Shima, sure. not not Shima. It's none of that. It's Shima. Sure. Got you. Yes, got you. We got you. We got you. All right, you guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much. We'll let you go, but um, best of luck on, on everything. Yeah, we right. really, really appreciate you guys coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thanks fellas. We appreciate guys. y'all. Oh, all right, guys. Appreciate appreciate it. It. Uh, thank you. I appreciate it. Everybody in the chat, everybody in the chat, 9 p.m. Come right back here at 9 p.m. We're going to do yes, a sir. post draft, give you the recap of who picked who, and if it was a good or smart pick. I'm telling you, Charlotte's going to do something crazy at two. I'm telling you. I can't. I, I, I'm, I'm really charged I'm with the draft because Tone been talking about this for a minute. So yeah. I'm, 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 I'm ready, Flu. Flu, and, and I'm I, ready. I, I think so we'll get know. through some of the, the top 10 together if you guys are on the show, obviously. Absolutely. <clears throat> it takes a while. So, yeah, we'll see you guys tonight. Uh, take it light, but. Take it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see y'all tonight, y'all. We'll see y'all tonight. Nine o'clock. I had to switch it up. We'll see.